Reality is always asking us, what is this life? Who are we? What am I doing? Somehow we have to answer with our practice. Even when we try to avoid answering reality's questions, that avoidance itself is an answer. The goal of our practice is not to experience something different from our day to day lives. It is to see deep into the reality of each being, including this one. Why does anyone have to practice? Dogen's answer to this question was just practice. We keep our eyes open naturally, not wide open, open naturally as if we see around three feet in front of ourselves. So it's a kind of a natural way of just keeping the eye open. In our practice, it, keep our eyes open is important because when I close our eyes, it's easy to fall into sleep or easily we have daydreaming. And also keep our eyes, our eyes open is also not negate or reject the stimulation from outside. Our gates are open, eyes, ears, nose, tongue and body, five, six sense organs are open. Not reject the things happening outside. I think that is the meaning of keep our eyes open. Mm. And by sitting, practice way of sitting, we find that our thinking is not the owner of ourselves. So we don't need to follow everything we want, we think. We become free from our ego self centered idea or thinking and try to uh, focus f here and now. And when we sit in the zendo, we can really let go of everything. But in our daily lives outside the zendo, we need to do something. For example, when we, we walk on the street, it's important to remember the meaning of the color of the you know, traffic light. We have to pay attention and need to understand what that means. Otherwise, it's dangerous. In our daily lives, for example, in Dogen's tradition, cooking is important practice. So Dogen uh, wrote writing about kitchen practice named Tenzo Kyokun, that is instruction for the cook. And uh, in that writing, he used the same expression with the description he used for Zazen. So the point is in our zendo, when we sit in the zendo, we can let go of really everything. But when, for example, a tenzo, a cook, work in the kitchen, the, the person needs to focus on really see, understand what the person is doing. The person should remember something. But other thought, other miscellaneous thought coming and going can be let go. But sometimes we uh, forget what I am doing, even though I'm doing. <laughs> I forget what I'm doing and think something else. But because of that practice, we know how to return to what I'm doing here and now. That is concentration of what we are doing here and now. So in the case of working in the kitchen, we have to f remember what I'm doing and also the order of the working from you know washing the rice and cutting vegetables and uh, actually cooking we are working in that kind of a process so we have to remember uh, where we are now in that process so we have to think something but rest of the miscellaneous things we can forget or let go and that is uh, how According to Dogen, that is how our Zazen function in our daily lives. So not only in the kitchen, but all other places and all other activities we do, it's the same. We focus on what I'm really facing, 
or doing and uh, forget about the rest of the meaningless uh, thought for what we are doing here and now. So that is how our Dazen practice works in our daily lives. I have been living in this way and this is the only way of life I experienced and I cannot compare my way of life and my physical condition with other people's. So it's really difficult to uh, tell. Some things I can say is we need to practice in poverty. We cannot be a uh, super rich. That means we cannot uh, spend a, a luxurious life. I have been eating simple, uh, wholesome um, food, and uh, I couldn't drink so much. <laughs> <laughs> luxurious life is not so healthy. <laughs> life in the not extreme poverty, but the word volunteer poverty. That is a middle way. <laughs> You know, not uh, chasing after, you know, luxurious life, but keep the life simple and uh, wholesome is, I think, the best way to keep our physical body also in a good condition. I'm not a vegetarian, but I basically eat vegetables and rice. I think that helps me to live in a healthy way. In the description of daily activities in the monasteries, the beginning of the day is in the evening. It's not in the morning when we wake up. That means our day starts evening zazen. And we sleep, I don't know, depending upon the teacher, how, how long we can sleep. But we usually wake up in you know, like uh, three or four in the morning. And we have a dozen practice and a morning service and breakfast. The time of sleeping is not, is not a break. It's a part of our practice. We have to sleep as our practice to keep our body most healthy condition. Our sleep is not a break from our practice, but sleeping is also a part of our practice. So we need to sleep in the most healthy way, best for our body and mind. When I was young, I found one interesting thing, that is when I sit during session, we sit 14 period a day, one period is 15 minutes, and we have a 10 minute walking meditation, and we repeat that 14 times and we have uh, three meals and a uh, short rest each, uh, during each meet. So those are three hours. So from four in the morning until nine in the evening, we just sit 14 periods a day, except three meals. And we try to you know, let go of thinking. And I found during session, I don't dream. Probably because I, have, I had enough dreams <laughs> during sitting. So I could sleep uh, very well, deeply, in that way. In uh, Zen practice, sleeping is not simply the resting time or break time. You, usually we think they start when we wake up and they end when we go to sleep. But uh, in Zen practice, that is not the case. That sleeping is a part of practice of 24 hours. Uh, it's important practice. Well, it's very really difficult <laughs> to think in such a way. For example, in Buddhism, in Mahayana Buddhism, to become a Buddhist, we are taught, you know, four, no, four Bodhisattva vows, you know, being the numberless, we vow to accept them and all those four vows. And uh, when we start st study what the meaning of these vows, and we find those vows are endless. That means there's no goal. We can say, now I save all living beings because 
living beings are numberless. So we start to see the endless or bottomless. From、uh, in the beginning, we just read those four words. We simply think that's good. That's a good idea. But when we start to practice, we see that it's really difficult to complete those four vows. And finally, we see that is the fulfilling that vow is not the goal, but to awaken to that endless vow without bottom or without goal. And yet, we walk one step、uh, each time, depending upon the scenery. Of life, what I can do and what I need to do to be helpful to the people around us, then we start to see, you know, this vow has no end. So this is also a kind of a process or practice.、Uh, so from the beginning, we can, when I first study Buddhism, I don't think, you know, such a depth or such a bottomless, you know, depth. But as continue we practice, we found you know this is really endless.